Hello. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> We're very live now. Everybody, welcome We're to more than live. Welcome to Mish. Hello, Julie. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Mandy. Hello, Barbara. Mish Burgess. How the hell are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. Living the dream as always. Um, I just um, I, I apologize for the state of me and the state of the background. I am in the process of moving from Darlington to Carlisle and I'll get shouted at in a minute going, is that Carlisle? Brampton. It's Brampton. Yeah, it's Brampton. I know it's Brampton. <laughs> so I'm in the process of moving house and up sticks and rejigging and just completely living a different life to what I thought I was going to be living when I met you back in whenever the hell I met you. Uh, oh, nearly two, is it nearly two, is it nearly two years it was it right in the height it. of covid i was living with my mother at the time she wanted to wrap mm. me up in bubble wrap she didn't look after me when covid first hit um so yeah. i guess um speaking two years to, in april isn't it two years in april wow so let's start at the beginning first of all a lot of you will have seen mish in terms of her success in terms of what she's done a lot of you will have messaged me previously just you know, I, I've been inspired by her, and it's very difficult not to be Mish, to be fair. Yeah. But let's wind it right back. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what you struggled with right at the what very beginning before, before we met? Um, I struggled with self-confidence as much as I come across like this. This this is me act, this was always me acting. I mean, you know, I, I perform, I can get on stage, I can do performances, but I was very good at putting a mask on. The, the underneath part of me didn't like me very much. I was great at going, I don't care, you know, I'm a size 22 in a dress, I don't care, I'm a, you know, um, I'm a, I'm outgoing, I don't, you know, fat and happy, that's me. I was that, I was the jolly, you know, the jolly one, you know, the jolly fat one, the one that's always the first to be derogatory to herself because then you're like, nobody else can hurt your feelings if you've said the things first, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and I think doing the sort of burlesque side of things, I actually ended up kind of believing my own hype in a way. And, and I was like, I was happier but I wasn't really happy and then I had that blinking call with you well I say I was happy I, I'd done Slimming World I'd lost a couple of stone on Slimming World it took me a few years because I was always on and off it on and off it on and off it because I I love food Alex you know me I love food I don't do like little portions I if I'm having a bowl of food I want food yeah. um so I was on it, off it, on it, on it. I eventually lost some weight, but then, and I started like I did this boot camp thing, and I started doing like all these hit exercises. So I was like, I'd lost some weight, but then I hit this plateau, and I was just stuck. And I was doing like this boot camp stuff and boxing and all these like really high intensity workouts, sweating my little puddings off. And you mean people will have seen my starting pictures. You know, and I was still a big lass and I was eating the right things as far as I was concerned from a Slimming World perspective. I was doing all this cardiovascular exercise, like so much and nothing, literally nothing changed. I'd like lose a pound one week and then I'd gain two the next and then I'd lose two and then I'd gain one. And I was just doing this and I just got to the point where I thought, that's it, it's menopause, isn't it? Everybody's talking about menopause. It's menopause. I'm in my 40s. My mother was on HRT by the time she was 40. I was having all the hot flushes, the night sweats. I was miserable. I was fed up. I felt like shit. You know me. I'll call a spade a spade. And I just thought, this is it. I'm just destined to be a big lass. You know, and all through my life, my parents, my mum and that, my mum, my granny and that, they'd always said, you know, you've got big bones, big bones in our family, it's big bones. You'll, your bones are bigger than a size eight, you'll never be less than a size ten because your bones are bigger than that, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. So I kind of give up, really. And then your thing pinged into me Facebook, and as I said before, I thought it was bull. I'd just done intermittent fasting. Uh, paid me money for sweet Fanny Adams. I'd spent three months coughing up that and starving myself, feeling miserable as sin. And I thought, here's this fella telling me that you can get me to lose two stone, two stone, two stone. Who does he think he is in 12 weeks? What a plonker. Um, but then I saw that you were a dietitian, and I know that obviously that's HPCP registered because I'm a nurse. So I went and looked up your registration on the council and found out that you really were. And I thought, well, he can't be lying then because if he is, he'll get struck off. <laughs> so I figured in for a penny, in for a pound, and I went for it. And, um, and then, yeah, just it, everything, literally life and everything changed. I dropped 
in total, I did uh, one stone eight in the first 12 weeks. And then by the time I, because uh, I did, I enjoyed it so much. And I thought I did it in COVID. I did it in lockdown, which was really easy, you know, because everything was shut. So I figured I needed a bit more support because of the circumstances where I did it. So I stayed on for that extra. And did and so in the total like uh, work in the twelve to twelve and then another twelve, I lost like three stone in the end. Um, and I went from a size sort of sixteen ish when I think because I'd lost a bit of weight. I'd gone from like a twenty twenty two to about sixteen mm. when I hip started with you. By the time I finished working with you, I dropped from a size sixteen to a size eight. So no. much for the bones are bigger than a size eight. Oh, <laughs> Miss, like. That is nuts because so many people are, are, are they're treading water with acceptance, which is what you mentioned. We start to believe, oh, it's the menopause, it's because of genetics, oh, yeah. because of yeah. what X, Y, and Z. And um, you proved them all wrong. You, you did it. Yeah. You know? And I didn't have to sweat my puddings off either. Like yeah. you, I remember the, the joy when, when I actually started to kind of um, training more and doing more after after the first week when I was sort of went and did some time got in really into the whole resistance training thing and I was like you were like if you want to really like build muscle you've got to like cut down on the cardio I'm like get in get in <laughs> like all right then but then I mean like stupid stuff like I mean I was doing all them hit classes when I started so cardiovascularly I was relatively fit but I couldn't run for toffee I remember being on one of your lives. There was a Facebook live. You were on it, and I was just, somebody was coming. I've just been out, just come back from my five k run, and I'm like, who is this freak that yeah. can run for five k? And I, I remember commenting on your live, going, I can't, I can't even run for like a minute and a half without coming and gasping for air. Not anymore. And now I just like, I'll just go off and have a little five k trot around, just cause, and, you know, in half an hour, I can, I can bang out a five k in half an hour on my lunch break. Like what? what it's ridiculous it's ridiculous it's ridiculous like your success is there mish and your enthusiasm is absolutely infectious which is what everyone's saying here by the way Daniel there's many Harry. infectious things <laughs> <laughs> i'm serious that they're all honestly like bernie ray julie saunders everyone has given you so much respect here tanya noble is watching Tanya is literally just signed up today. Cool. Hey Tanya, just just do it. Just go for it. It's awesome. Ah. And I've got to be honest. So you know me, Alex. I've got to be honest, right? So since I stopped working with you a year ago, mm -hmm. but just over a year ago now, in the last year, I as you know, I've sold the family home that I was in for 20 odd years, bought a new house, um, had a daughter move back in with me, another daughter go to university, then the daughter that moved back in with me has gone down to uh, gone down to live down south and then I'm now in the sticks and moving over to Carlisle because I've got a new fella and um, life has not been like all hunky dory cushy roses, right, life has been interesting as life always is um, and um, I will not lie, I have regained a little bit of weight, but I was sat at just over 10 stone and a size eight, and I'm now sat probably around about a stone heavier, but I'm still a size 10. And do you know what? For me, I, that is my happy medium. Yeah. That is, I've found... Yeah. <sighs> I found where I'm at and I know that if I put my clothes on and I start to feel a little bit tight, I get my little my fitness pal out and I go back and I dig into my little recipes. And I did one today. I made myself um, cauliflower cheese, a roasted cauliflower cheese for lunch today. Right. And I've just and I knocked it all up. And then afterwards, I thought I'm just going to check because every so often I just check, like just by putting it into my fitness pal just to see like what all my like little macros and everything. Are. Nailed it. Nailed it, full, massive bowl, pasta, cauliflower, all my veggies, all colourful it was. 407 calories, didn't even count it until afterwards. Boom. Uh -huh. So I do it without thinking now. That's the, that's, that's the thing that I find that, that, so for anybody that's just starting, just learn, learn from Alex, learn from his stuff, do the reading, because then you know your stuff. I mean, like, I'm... Um, my fella, like, he's, he works out on that. And I've been sort of teaching him stuff now. And my boy, I mean, my boy, you've heard me talk about my boy before. Dan's still killing it. 
Dan is like looking so buff now. He's got like biceps and everything. Unreal. Dan is Misha's son, by the way. Yeah. So this exactly. is what I mean. You don't keep this stuff to yourself. You pass it on to anyone who listen, especially nearest and dearest. So yeah. when you told me that he lost two stone last year, I was like, oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. He shut up. I mean, he has, he shut up. Um, but he, and he, so he says to me the other day, he says, Mom, I've gained a little bit of weight again. And I says, but Dan, you're about a foot taller than you were. I mean, he's six foot two now. I think, yeah, about six foot two. Uh, but he's ripped. He's got like this jawline. He's, he used to, when he was a kid, he used to have little, little six pack. It's all coming back now. I was in the gym with him the other day. And uh, uh, you know, the, the leg extension machine. Yeah. He maxes it out now. Maxes wow. it out. He has to. He has to go on the big boy machines now because he's doing like leg extensions with the full weights on and that. And he's always like, "Mom, mom, try this, mom, mom." How does that make you feel that you've oh, done? Mint. It's mint. You know. I mean, I'm so much happier in myself. And like I say, I know at the moment I'm I'm still carrying a little bit of my Christmas stuff at the minute, you know. So I'd probably like to get a couple of pound back off because I've just got a pair, I've got a pair of size ten jeans that are a little bit too snug at the minute, you know. Can you believe that size ten? They're a bit too snug. But um, so yeah, I want to get a couple of pounds off. But I know it's dead. It's just it's easy now. I now I'm in control now. That's that's the difference. That if I want to go out and have a slice of cake I'll go out and have a slice of cake but then I just do a little bit of extra training or I go for a run or um, I just cut back a little bit on some you know somewhere else and, and just that that balance I don't have to say oh I can't post I have to if I go out with friends I don't have to say oh I can't have that you know if I have it I want it and then I just have to just balance it out like by doing this here and it just it all just works and I know what I'm doing and like I say I'm in I'm in control of it. So it's all good. And let's talk about that control aspect because the reason why it's great to have you here, Mish, is because obviously you've not just lost the weight, but you, you've sustained it. As in like yeah. you have that balance now, you've kept it off for what, 18 months, you know, since yeah. we worked yeah, together about that. on a one-to-one -one basis. So what have you learned? If you were to give tips, five, six things that you've learned that are now habitual for you, that you'd like to pass on to someone watching this who was at the start of their journey? Uh, habitual things for me, journaling is life. Yeah, 100%. So that's my nice new orange one today. Oh, Just started a new book. Stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> journaling is life. Um, the, so I do my journaling. Um, weight training, it doesn't have to, you don't have to, the amount of people that go, oh, weight training, you'll get like all, like, big and bulky no you don't um like at my age I now know that I need to maintain my muscle mass of the and it's muscles that burn off your calories so you can eat more and I like food as we've established so you know I'm going to keep my muscle mass um so I've, I've still got I've got little biceps going on let's see that look at these guns look at this <laughs> like so massive but it's there you know my legs and that just um, squatting is great for your ass. I know this as well. Um, <laughs> that's that's I, always good. Yeah. Much better always, than Jane Fonda's. People yeah, think about always. bands and they're raising one leg like that. It's all about the squats. Um, you can you can tie exercise into any task. So there's there's a door here and there's a dynaband thing attached to it because I do I do stuff with a dicky shoulder so I can I can do my I can just sit here like this and do my rehab when I'm on calls. Um, I've also I think one of the biggest things I think as well is the mindset stuff is learning that you don't have to do all or nothing. Yes. better is enough and that was a massive thing for me I am as you know a perfectionist and I am inclined to throw the baby out with the bathwater. you know if things don't go um perfectly then I'll be like well I've messed up therefore if I I used to if I had one bad meal I would have a bad week because I'd be like well I've blown it now yeah. so whereas now I'm like do you know what like today, today I've had a day from hell. I've had all the work. I've done 4,287 steps today, which is absolutely appalling. I try and get me 10,000 a day. But you know what? That's what I, that's how today's been. And I'll pull it back. It'll make up for it another day because I'll end up with 15,000 one day when I go out for a run and stuff, you know? It, so that's, that's been a biggie, learning to be kinder 
kinder to myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because everyone's going to have those days. And, you know, we wouldn't speak to our best friends like that. So why do we beat ourselves up all the time? Exactly. Having that control, being able to eat a large volume of food, being able to do weight training to keep your metabolism high, being able to do 5Ks off the cuff like they're nothing. Having your son lose two stone and now being ripped <laughs> to hell, oh, like you said, right? like- the fact you've maintained that you did tough mother with us, of course, in London. I and- did. And I've signed up to do the next one. And I never in a million years, I cried on that big tall thing, you know, because I'm so scared of height. Yeah. And I could climb me up that, right? And I had my eyes shut and I'm just feeling my way up this living car gunner. And the other half was trying to be all encouraging. And he's like, because he's a, he was, we used to work on roofs and stuff. So he's just like, la, la, la up to the top say say come on just focus just keep and I'm like and then I I, I did swear at him quite a few times I just kept going shut up (laughs) and he's like I'm trying to be encouraging and I'm like he's not helping and then when I got off at the other end I just burst into tears because I can't actually believe to this day that I did it but anyway you did it I did it it was awesome it was so awesome I'm gonna do it again 100%. 100%. And those of you who haven't signed up yet, please do. And you can meet Mish in the flesh in Scotland and myself as well. And we'll do it together. All of us do it together. Yeah. And look, Mish, what makes you think now that this is all habitual? I know it's 18 months later. You've obviously kept the weight off. You've managed to stay consistent. What makes you think you're never going to go back to that size 16 or size 22? I got um one of my my end picture when I finished working with you I got it printed out um on a canvas with the picture the very first picture uh, that I took and sent to you the one where I just looked so miserable and old um and I put them side by side on the canvas and it lives at the foot of my bed and it's the first thing I see when I wake up and the last thing I see when I go to bed and that I am not I don't want to be that woman anymore I like this one. This one's cool. This one's this one's good. So I didn't we'll, know we'll that keep... you did that. That is so good to know. I yeah. had no idea that you did that. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's uh, my first ever. It's and it's awful, God. And then everybody talks about when you first work, work with you and this. You have to you make us send that first picture in, and it's hideous. And it makes you cry on your call as well, guys. If like you know, but um, but it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah oh, the first man. the first picture they're so soul destroying they really are so soul destroying but seeing that every day is a damn good reason not to go back so that's incredible so every single day you're woken up by a huge accomplishment that you managed to do a huge yeah. accomplishment. and, and it's just that- kind of reminded that you can really in it so absolutely yeah. just increases your self-belief just increases your self-belief Mm-hmm. And what would you say to someone? There's loads of people here. I mean, so many people are commenting. We've 117 comments already. Wow. What would you say to someone who is a little bit nervous, haven't, hasn't worked with us yet, or has just started and perhaps is a little bit scared that they might fail? That's something else. I want, to, I want us to help everybody who's currently on the program as well. Um, well, I was convinced that I would either fail during or afterwards because that's what I do um, I, I'm either perfect or a failure and I and I didn't honestly think that I could be perfect therefore I knew I would fail mm. if that makes sense um, yeah. and I wasn't perfect Alex I wasn't perfect I fell off the wagon during the program but I think if you're already on it guys just pick yourself up dust yourself off and listen to Alex's video on black and white thinking um, <laughs> um, because it doesn't matter. You don't have to be perfect today. All you've got to be today is a little bit better than you were yesterday. And right. I think that's that's the biggest thing for me. Um, and I think for anybody that's thinking about it, that's on the fence, go and look at the HPCP website, the like professional registration for dietitians. He really is there. He really does exist. You can even look me up on the NMC because I'm a nurse as well, so I'm not allowed to lie. And I genuinely worked with Alex and I am not being paid to do this. Um, and I volunteered because if I can, if me whiffling on with Alex for 10, 15 minutes is, is, makes you sign up, and you feel how I felt when I worked with him and how I still feel now, like over a year down the line, then it's been worth every minute of it. So if you can do it, do it. He's not full of bullshit. 
<laughs> I love you so much. You know that, don't you? You absolutely do. I know. Thank you for the kind words. You're on your star. And I know the, the main thing I've written down from that that I, I'm certainly going to take away is that better is enough. I think that's so powerful. Better is enough. Better than you were yesterday. Better is enough. We don't need to be perfect. And I think that that striving for perfection can lead to us beating ourselves up. So Mish, it has been a luxury having you here. Absolutely. Yep. You know, and you're going nowhere. You know, like I'm always going to have you on speed dial on my phone. I think forever. I know. And can I just say as well, guys, that I hadn't been on because with life and moving house and everything, I hadn't been around for a little while. And Alex actually just rang me out of the blue and went, hey, how are you? I haven't heard from you. And how's that for customer service? He's a nice I guy. I like you, Mish. Not being... Say that again. <laughs> I said he's a nice guy that cares. Thank you, Mish. No, but I obviously um, notice, you know, if, if I don't see any inner circle. So I wanted to check in and make sure everything was fine. And I was blown back to obviously realise that everything was more than fine. And that makes yeah. me very happy. So Just busy you. living my best life. Right? Busy living my best life. Love it. Speaking of which, I'm keeping you from your class. So yes, I need to go to yoga. Go enjoy, go enjoy, practice what we preach. I'm going to stay on and talk about self limiting beliefs. Better is enough. That's a favorite thing you've said to me in a long time. Thanks, yeah. again. Thanks again. And have a wonderful session. And of course, I'll see you in person in July. You will indeed. See you all later. Have fun. Bye. Bye bye, Mish. See you soon. Oh my gosh, ladies and gents, yet again, I am left to try and follow something like that which i don't think is doable how do you follow that how do you follow that and i'm going to keep bringing on champions like mish like so many people reason being reason being is because i want you to all realize that if you stay persistent if you do move away from black and white thinking you will get there because you're not alone you're absolutely not alone there's so many incredible people here already Comment in, look at all of the nice words. How do I find some of a weight loss diet? Thank you, Mish. Uh, bye, Mish. That was great. And I know Mish well. She's going to watch that back. And that's like a little weapon she'll have for herself to increase her own self-belief. Because those of you who've been on these weight loss clinics before in the past, you're well aware that when you see your own accomplishments written down, when they're consolidated, all that does is motivate you. All that does is motivating anything is doable mandy wyatt absolutely love it bottle her personality and said she's a star she certainly is barbara okay so today pen and paper at the ready please i am going to walk through self-limiting beliefs and how we can overcome them this is so so important so so important diane gone great to have you here great to have you here right I look at miss you watching now from on route i love it <laughs> I told you, Mish, you'll be watching back, didn't I? Didn't I say it to you? Okay, so self-limiting beliefs. First of all, I would like you to comment into the chat a self-limiting belief that you've had in the past that you have found has discouraged you from making a change or has been an obstacle that you've had to overcome. So if you comment below... Thanks for the comment, Janet. I certainly want to give you a call myself tomorrow and see what I can do to help you, Janet. I will do everything. I'm determined to help in you. And of course I will. Thank you, Lorna. Thank you, Linda. Cannot be consistent. So consistency, I don't have time. Okay, cannot sustain. Loads of them coming in here. Gained a few pounds back. So what's the point? Bigger bone, size 10, I won't stick to it. Thank you, Mish. So it will never work, it never does. All right, let's look at not enough time. Okay, so self-limiting belief. I'm going to write down a few of these. Not enough time is one. Not sustainable. Hello, Pauline, welcome. Post-menopause. So not sustainable. Menopause. Okay. Let's look at these one at a time, please, guys. And I'd like you to also make sure you have a pen and paper poised. So the first one, the first one, let's look at not having enough time, not having enough time. So as I'm sure you're well aware, all of us have 24 hours, whether it is someone who is homeless or whether it is the president of, of the country you live in. 
The truth is all of us are 24 hours. However, that being said, all of us have also got different priorities and some of us have got lots of responsibilities. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know what it's like to have elderly parents who need care or to have a partner that's very unsupportive. These are real obstacles. They're not excuses. They're obstacles. So the first thing I want you to know in terms of time being a barrier, I want you to know that me saying everyone is 24 hours, while it's the truth, that doesn't mean that it's not more challenging for some people, okay? That does not mean that it's not more challenging for some people because it is. Some people have got four kids. Some people are the glue who's, that's holding everything together. So what I'm going to do now is a very simple exercise to help you ensure that you don't fall down to the self-limiting belief of not having enough time. Really, really important. So first of all, we've got 24 hours in the day. We sleep eight hours a night. Some of you will sleep seven. Some of you will sleep nine. 24 hours in the day, we sleep eight hours a night. Those of you who are very career driven, who work hard, self-employed perhaps, work 10 hour days. So 24 is the total hours in the day. We now have got eight hours of sleep. We've got 10 hours of work. That's 18 hours, 18 hours. We now have six hours left, six hours left. Take away two hours for family time, whether that be a half hour in the morning and 90 minutes at night, two hours for family time. That leaves you with four hours, four hours. Say if you drive to and from work, say the traffic is terrible, really tough day, it's an hour each way, an hour each way. So two hours commute. That leaves you with two hours left over. Those two hours, you could spend 60 minutes doing food prep and you could spend 45 minutes doing exercise and you could spend five minutes journaling. Okay, so your downtime, your family time could be getting your steps, watching TV, reading a book, but you still have two hours left over there when we do wind it down for some food prep, if you want a food prep, and also as well for exercise, 45 minutes. So, so important. So, so important. So important. So I want you to think about when perhaps you felt you didn't have time when you got things done. So great way of, again, allowing you to find more time is to use the four D's. Do it, delay it, delete it, delegate it. I want you to write these four D's down. Do it, delay it. Chris Angel, great to have you here. Great to have you here, Chris. So good to see Chris back. Do it, delay it, delete it, delegate it. Do it, delay it, delete it, delegate it. So out of those four D's, I would like you to each please... I'd like you to each be, hello, Janet, welcome. I'd like you to each please comment one thing you're going to do, one thing you're going to delete, one thing you're going to delegate, and one thing you're going to delay. Do it, delay it, delete it, delegate it, okay? What this will do is it will show you something that perhaps doesn't have to be done for you, or more importantly, it can allow you to delete an urgent task that perhaps isn't important. I want you to write that down. Where in my life can I delete an urgent task that isn't important. Because remember, urgency and importance are not the same. So where in my life can I delete an urgent task that isn't important? Please, please, please comment them below. I wanna make sure you're all paying attention and of course that I'm making sense. Where can we delete an urgent task out of our life that perhaps isn't important? So what I would mean by that is if EastEnders was starting at 7.35, then for me to watch EastEnders, it would be urgent that I go watch it now <laughs> because it's about to start. But do I feel watching it is important? Probably not, especially when I'm on the live talking to you guys, especially when I'm talking to, on the live talking to you guys. I'm not saying never watch TV. Obviously, I do as well. It's important that we do that but I hope that makes sense. It gets harder the longer you're doing TSD as I already got rid of a lot. Great stuff, Alison, absolutely. So to find out what's serving us, 
what's serving us and what isn't. So in terms of time overcoming that belief, it's important that we first know we've all got 24 hours. Do not beat yourself up if you do genuinely have more responsibilities than many, or if you do have a lot of things that you're juggling. Wind back the clock. Look at the 24 hours in the day. Break it all up into segments. Where could you find some time? Where perhaps are you spending time on something that's not serving you? Increased awareness leads to better choices. Okay, increased awareness leads to better choices. If you're more aware of where you're spending your time, I guarantee it, you will be better able to manage it. I want you to write that down. If you're more aware of where you spend your time, you will be better able to manage it. That's so important. Try delegating dog, delete TV, do steps, prep food, delay housework. Absolutely. Right, let's talk about housework. What if, what if you put the same time into your body and your health as you put into maintaining a clean house? What if you put the same time into your body and your health and the same commitment into maintaining your body rather than keeping your house clean? What would that look like? What would that look like? What if some of your family were brought on board to help with the cleaning? What if rather than cleaning the house twice a week, you cleaned it once a week? What would happen? Would the world come to an end? Nine times out of 10, it won't. But if you have that time and you prioritize yourself first, I'll tell you now, all of a sudden, once you start keeping promises to yourself, your self-belief goes up and so does your self-worth. Keeping promises to yourself ensures that your self-belief and your self-worth goes up. It's so important. So important. Social media. I already do housework. I hate cleaning. Social media, loads of people, loads of comments here. So commit now to deleting something in your day that's not serving you. Commit now to delegating something that perhaps is not urgent. Like my WhatsApp. I certainly am not very, very responsive on my WhatsApp or emails as well. Because I, I find that if I'm speaking to someone or doing a live clinic like this or speaking to someone on a one-to-one -one basis, it serves me more and it serves the person more. So this will always be my, well, my priority, my priority. Okay, so keep committing to things that you're going to do, delay, delete, really, really important, really important. Great stuff. Delete those addictive phone games, get a cleaner and a gardener. Barbara, great point. If you can afford a cleaner, I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. If it means more family time or more work time, then that's a huge win. Put the mobile in the different room. Great stuff, Helen. Right. Let's look at another set of limiting beliefs. We should have loads of them there now. <laughs> I love that, Elaine. Okay, not sustainable. I want you to write this down as well as a self-limiting belief. Believing that what we're doing is not sustainable. Believing that what we're doing is not sustainable. Okay, why do we have that belief first of all? The reason why we have that belief is because we've tried so many things in the past. I want you to write this down. Just because... Just because I have not succeeded in the past does not mean it cannot be done. Does not mean it cannot be done. Just because I have not succeeded in the past does not mean it cannot be done. And right now, I'm going to list out the reasons to why it can be done. I'm going to link this in to the menopause, which is also connected to the self-limiting belief. We feel that if we're going to the menopause, all of a sudden, because of hormonal changes, it cannot be done. Just because it is, I have not succeeded in the past does not mean that it cannot be done. Please, 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 please. I invest in my health by having a cleaner. I love that Mandy. Great stuff, Maria. Okay, so first of all, we need to have a narrative to ourselves that's going to serve us. Say something to ourselves that's actually going to encourage us to realize that just because it's happened in the past does not mean it cannot be done. 
every single person who you admire who has achieved incredible things has spent a life failing. Everybody, Thomas Edison, a thousand attempts before he invented the light bulb. A thousand attempts. Oprah Winfrey was told she wasn't fit for TV. J.K. Rowling was turned away by publisher after publisher after publisher before she wrote Harry Potter. So many people have become successful through failure. So we need to look at what failure is. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're somebody who isn't good enough. What it means is you haven't found the right way yet. What it means is you haven't found the right way yet. So right now I'm gonna to explain to you why what we're trying to do here is sustainable. I'm gonna to explain to you why it's not gonna be a flash in the pan. This is so important, so important. Okay, number one, we look at all of your obstacles, whether it be injuries, whether it be lack of time, whether it be responsibilities, or whether it be you putting everybody else first. We look at all of your obstacles. If we look at all of your obstacles, it means we can acknowledge them, not put our head in the carpet. If we can acknowledge your obstacles, it means we can find solutions to overcome them. Whether that be not wanting to cook or not liking cooking, or whether that be having a partner that's not very supportive. Okay, so getting your obstacles out on the table. This is so important. I want you to write that down. Getting your obstacles out on the table. Next, mindset reprogramming. As I can see all of you commenting below here in terms of, I've frozen, have I? Fingers crossed, unfroze. Can you hear me now? I'm back. Good to hear it, Janet. Okay. I'm hoping it stopped freezing. The next is mindset reprogramming. This is a critical piece. This is where we look at the behavioral aspect of it, which a lot of you will be learning now already with your reading list, with the books that we encourage you read, to read, with the one-to-one -one call with a psychologist, with the behavior change trainings from me. OK, with the behavior change training from your personal coach, the mindset piece, nine times out of 10, when I speak to someone, one of the biggest reasons as to why they haven't sustained in the past is because there was not enough work around the psychology or on the mindset aspect of weight loss. That is so critical. So, so critical. If you're able to acknowledge and understand why you have failed in the past, I use the word failed very loosely, why you haven't been able to sustain the weight loss in the past, if we're able to acknowledge the differences, that's a huge help. That's a huge help. So one is obstacle, Sarah Bell, hello. Susan, how are you? So acknowledging the obstacles, mindset reprogramming, working on the mindset piece, that is critical, absolutely critical. Next aspect of sustainability is personalization. Personalization, why is personalization important? Please comment below, why I don't eat, eat avocados. Let's see who's paying attention. <laughs> Shian Park, how are you? Please comment below why I do not eat avocados. Can anyone remember? Anyone seen the eight pillars of sustainable weight loss? Anyone know why I do not eat avocados? Any guesses? You hate them. <laughs> yes, Rachel, absolutely. Because I hate avocados and I'm never going to go near them. Babs always tricks me. I like keeping cooked meat in tinfoil in the fridge and Babs also wraps her half an avocado with it. I am there with excitement opening up the tinfoil to find a flipping half stink avocado in the tinfoil. I don't eat them because I don't like them. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't because maybe you like them. But my point is, don't eat food that you don't like. It has to be personalized. So if you think about why it hasn't been sustainable in the past, ask yourself this really honest question. Have I ever tried to eat something in the past just because it is, inverted commas, good for me? Have I ever tried to eat foods on a meal plan that was generic because the health benefits, or there is, it's a superfood. Have I ever tried to lose weight while eating foods that I don't enjoy? If 
that's the case, if that's the case, then that will again give you more reasoning as to why it hasn't been sustainable in the past. So when we start finding these little gaps, by the way, or areas of development, it's a good thing because it means that we can put forward a solid argument for ourselves as to why now it can be sustained. Okay, so why have I not sustained it in the past? Or maybe I haven't looked at all the obstacles that were in front of me, whether it be my parents being cared for, whether it be my husband not being on the same page, whether it be arthritis, or my son or daughter was going through some severe mental health issues. There could be lots of reasons. What were the obstacles in the past? Were they accounted for yes and no? If the answer is no, okay, well, how can I account for them now? How can I account for them now? Two, the mindset piece. In the past, have I just been given information or was there actual one-to-one -one support around the psychological aspect of weight loss? If the answer is no, that's a win because that shows you as to why it hasn't worked previously. Again, that will start to build self-belief. Three, personalization. Have you been forced to eat avocados if you don't enjoy them? Have you been forced to eat any food that you don't enjoy? Okay, I'm having a love affair with porridge. Mandy, you're on fire tonight. I love it, I love it, I love it. Basically, what it means is if you can spot something that you've tried in the past that hasn't worked long term, then it will it'll be massive. It will be absolutely massive. It really, really will. Because it means that you're able to recognize the need for personalization. And that is so, so important. So, so, so important. Okay. Support as well. Have you been given support in the past? Have you genuinely been given support on a daily basis? Or has it been a check-in once a week or a check-in once a month? That's so, so important. Oh, Anne-Marie, lovely to hear that. The support is a key aspect, and not just from us, by the way, the support from you guys. I think one of the most incredible things about what you guys do is you support each other, and that's massive. That's absolutely massive. The inner circle, very powerful place. This group, very powerful place. So ask yourself these questions. When I tried in the past, did I have this level of support? Did we address the mindset? Was it personalized? Was I feeling satiated? <laughs> Like Mish said, she loves her food. She loves her food. So find out whether or not the food that you've tried in the past has led to satiation, feeling of fullness. If the answer is no, again, that's a win. Okay, well, if I'm full now, that's going to increase my chances of keeping the weight off. What you're doing here, everybody, is you're building evidence. You're building evidence as to why you can sustain the weight loss. This is so important. I mean, please don't, do not underestimate what I'm talking about tonight because all of you who are in the program or whether you're not in the program, it, it's really important for you to know this. If you can put the evidence down for all the things that you've tried in the past and find reasons as to why they haven't worked and then find out why what you're doing right now is different, all that's going to do is build confidence and momentum. And that's so important. So important. Put forward a list of evidence to back up your argument of sustainability. To back up your argument of sustainability. So, so important. Thank you, Maria. I appreciate that. Loving this video. Thank you, Michelle. Good to hear. Good to hear. Also, actually, don't just take these things I'm giving you at face value. Ask yourself the question, has anybody else lost weight during the menopause and kept it off? And I'm hoping if you heard the beginning of this video, you met the wonderful Mish Burgess and you heard her story. She's done it. She's kept it off. She's maintained that weight loss. And if you surround yourself with people who are further ahead than you, who have also done it, all that's going to do is increase your confidence. That's all it's going to do. So you have a big list of evidence there as to why it can be done, as to why what you've tried in the past hasn't worked as to why what you're doing right now is different. And you're surrounding yourself with people who have lost the weight, but are consistently keeping it off. Kathy McKenna, incredible human being, finished the program, still learning, delighted, Kathy. And Kathy, you're going to have access to us here forever and go nowhere. Post Meno, 14 years. Look at Debbie McQueen. Debbie, how many stone have you lost? How many stone? 
Love it, Marianne. Rachel, great to have you here too. I want you guys to know that you, you keep losing weight or you keep maintaining the results long after working with us on a one-to-one -one basis. Like I'm going to be here for life. I'm going absolutely nowhere. I love what I do. I really love what I do. Okay. And the reason why I love what I do is because I'm surrounded. Five stone, Debbie McQueen. I just cut myself off there, but five stone, Debbie. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I have lost a bit and I'm in menopause. Mandy Wyatt has lost eight stone. Eight stone, our biggest ever weight loss loser in the history of TSD. Mandy, take a bow. Such an incredible lady. Such an incredible lady. Lynn, how are you? Big wave, Lynn. So many people here. So many people. So I suppose really the most important, now look at this, Caroline Kirkland, what an incredible human being. What I want you to take from this is there's going to be self-limiting beliefs, whether it's the fact that we over-trivialize the problem or we think it's a quick fix, it's about moving more and eating less. That isn't the truth. If it was that simple, there wouldn't be so many people struggling. Whether it be the fact that we haven't got time, what happens if you were to put yourself forward to build an argument as to why you do have time? What would that look like? What would that look like? Where can we compromise? Who can I have conversations with? Who in my family and friend circle needs to hear what I have to say? Who in my family and friend circle needs to hear what I have to say? Who needs to be told it straight in terms of the fact that I have been coming last for long enough and now it's my time? Who needs to hear that conversation? What would happen if you were a priority for 35, 40 minutes in the morning every day? Just that. What would happen? What would happen if you didn't fall into this all or nothing mindset of I have to do all the meal prep? What if instead you just were able to pick foods from Tesco Express or from M&S, look at the back of the packets and then remember what you normally have, rotate it every three to four days and not have to food prep? What if you prioritize your fluids so you never felt hungry or rarely felt hungry? What if we increase your protein and your fiber again to reduce hunger? So many ways we can keep learning and growing, everybody. You know, and there's a reason as, as to why, like, I spend most of these clinics talking about the psychological aspect of it. It's because most people talk themselves out of having a better life, whether they trivialize the problem or whether they justify a delay waiting until the right time, or whether it's that. They let past experiences stop them from trying again. But a lot of you out here are mums or grandmothers or granddads and dads. And if your son or daughter tripped seven or eight times when learning to walk, you wouldn't say, you know what, perhaps just stop there. You know what, perhaps just accept it because of the menopause, because of your joints, fibromyalgia, diabetes, high blood pressure shortness of breath, COPD, do not lie down to these limitations. And the reason I feel so strongly about this is because I know it can be done. I've done it, I lost the weight, kept it off, but so did all these wonderful, incredible people. Morag, Jane, Michelle Reeve, so many of you. So right now I'd like you to comment one thing that you're gonna take away from this video tonight, please, one thing you know you'll never be skinny. Oh, Liz, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm not sure about you, Liz, but if that was my sister, I would, I would tell her how that comment makes me feel. I, I would be really upfront and really straight. Yes, Nick. One thing, better is enough. Kerry, I agree. Better is enough is one of the best Phrases I have heard in a long time. Better is enough. Better is enough. Start today. Yes, Lynn. Love it. Kathy, keep going. Believe in myself. Let's keep these going. Mindset is key. Equally up there journaling. Time. After injury, recurrent sickness. Starting from day one. I can do it. Yes, Jackie. It's doable. Love that word. Doability, sustainability. Better is enough. Better is enough. Prioritizing yourself. Better is enough. Never give up. Love that, Helen. Absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. 
Every day is a new day. Love it. Believe in myself. Determination. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Love that, Chris. I know it works, so I'm not stopping. That's amazing, Anne. I know it works, so I'm not stopping. That serious grit in that comment, one day at a time, slow and steady, believe in the process. Not dead, can't quit. Yes, Sadie. That's what I'm talking about. Every day is an opportunity. Every day is serious opportunity. I can be bothered rather than I can't be bothered. Don't compare yourself to others. Absolutely. Trust in the program. I can see a bright future. No such word as can't. Thanks, Jackie. So many here. Like, I know I should have clocked off ages ago, but I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of enjoying these, to be honest. It's sustainable if you fall off the wagon. Falling off the wagon is okay. Having a slip is okay. Prioritize me. Small things. Small things consistently done achieve extraordinary results. Small things consistently done achieve extraordinary results. And I really, really mean that. I really, really mean that. I really do. But I'm hoping you found this helpful. I'm hoping you've got one or two things you're going to take away and apply. And I hope that you do think that you're worth it. I hope that you do think that you're enough. And remember, small things consistently done provide extraordinary results. Extraordinary results. God, thank you, Barbara. It is my absolute pleasure. It is my absolute pleasure. And thank you for all the comments. We have 510 comments already. That's just incredible. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this has been helpful. Please, please, please re-watch this if you're catching the end. Watch the whole lot. Rewatch it when you're struggling. Rewatch it when you need to hear it. Rewatch it when your self doubt is at an all time high. Because you know what? You can do it. And there's so much evidence. And I'm so certain in that. The only thing what we need is just honesty. If you keep being honest, you will get there. You will 100% get there. Thank you, Melly. I really, really appreciate that. It's my pleasure. And you give me a reason to get up every single morning. Thanks a million, guys. All the best.